All right, guys, welcome to this episode called Engine Bread. We are actually going to be cooking something, and um, we're actually going to be cooking it on the road uh, on our adventure uh, to go see Reuben Lacey's church. There, I let the cat out of the bag. So, uh, you might have seen my other channel, Over the Hill Hipster. I will give you a link to it right about there right about now that little eye that's popping up you want it you want to see this i'm gonna i'm quite the accomplished chef but in this episode we're going to throw away everything you've ever thought about cooking starting with this you know this go-to uh, cookbook that looks like grandma's tablecloth forget that we're going right to the source of how to make engine bread and that's the do-rag recipe for engine bread Okay, so we're going to give credit where credit is due. Uh, the original recipe for engine bread come out of Bob Log the third. Now we're going to start talking about the kinds of things you'll need. And one of them is Reynolds Wrap. So the first thing you're going to need is one of these. I don't know what they are. They're like some wifey thing, but I want you to notice that there's inches. Yeah, just for you, Metricator, there's also centimeters. You know why you have to have this? Because if I give you a millimeter, you're going to take a kilometer. Okay, besides our do-rag engine bread cookbook that I told you about already, you're going to need a few things here. Um, and it's really important that you have these bowls to put stuff in. Of course, you're going to put the larger element uh, or quantity stuff in the larger bowl and the smaller one in the smaller bowl. That's quite profound. Um, and then you're going to need this color and you're going to need this color. Don't use any other color because you know why? Because you see this? I'm going to try not to break anything. You see that, that color? You know why it has to be that color? Yeah, that's right. That's why. Just do what I say and everything will be okay for you. Okay, y'all know what this is, right? Well, you think you know what it is, right? You buy this with all this junk on it. Now, first thing, why didn't I, why, why did I get this color? Yeah, they didn't have this color. That's the only reason, but this looks like a, a typical stand mixer, right? Well, guess what? It's not, because if you take all this, come on, let's go. What's going on here? You take all this scrap apparatus off of it. There we go. Now you all know what this is, right? <laughs> it's a coil winder is what it is, and it's hiding right in her kitchen, but she don't know it. You put your <laughs> spool of wire over here and you pretend you're baking a cake. Hey, listen to me. You go to the store, you buy a cake. Don't buy the best looking one because they'll never believe you made it. But you're in here, you got the blindfold on, on them in the next room and you're wrapping coils all day on this mixer and then you take them to cake. It's almost as good as that trick where you put the piece of onion in your pocket so you can cry during chick movies, dude. Trust me, I'll take you where you need to go. Anyway, let's put this away. Let's hide all this stuff. And then we'll see if we can actually use this for what it was intended to be used for on a secondary level. I just discovered uh, through some information from my technical editing team that um, you weren't able to see all of me in the shot. So um, I'll fix that for you. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, make sure that that sign, you're holding that sign straight because I'm old and I can't. Oh, hi. Hey, this is what you're going to need now. You're going to need six cups of flour, one package of self-rising yeast or whatever they call it. Just go to the store. Uh, make sure in the grocery store, you won't find this in the clothing store. Uh, two and a quarter cups of milk, two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of butter, and one teaspoon of salt. Let's try that one more time. Oh. So I'll tell you what, 
I do know one thing about this. The last recipe I used it for uh, this uh, coil wound here turned out great, but now I'm going to have to like put this thing in its disguise and we'll get on making the ingredients of engine bread. Let's go to the... This isn't a bench. I don't know. Anyway, before I forget, you need to subscribe. Uh, engine, engine bread hater. I imagine I've created a monster, so I'll expect three dislikes. Uh, metric hater, deck screw hater, engine bread hater. I think that you might all be the same person, so my highly deductive mind will figure that out if I only get one dislike. So, anyway, back to the kitchen table. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put the milk, the butter, the salt, and the sugar in this saucepan right here. Okay, my technical advisory culinary whatever team has told me that this is kind of a saucepan. So I'm going to put, I guess that's salt. Yeah, it is. And that's sugar, and that's butter. And this is milk. We're going to put that, and I guess we're going to heat it up. All right, now we're going to take two and a half cups of flour and put them in this mixing bowl right here. That's about two. Now, I know there's six cups in here, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to put the yeast, which just ended up half it in the other bowl. But again, it doesn't matter because I can just slop. you got to be able to adapt. This is like the same skill set you're using to build Cigar Box Guitars Partner. Hey, I, I, I guess they need me here, eh, mate? I've been having somebody walk in the plank and I guess they need my hook for this part. All right. There we go, how's the hair? Okay, now we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty. It's time to get serious and um, you know what? You see them candles right over there? I should really use a remote control to turn those down a little bit. What do you think? Anyway, on to more technical stuff. We're going to take this 130 degree mixture that has our all our food scrap apparatus and we're going to put it in to the mixer which is down and we're going to put it on low and slow and we're just going to dump this in here like this. I hope I don't get any of this milk and stuff on my fire the next time I do a coil wrap, but we'll have to see. And then I got this thing, again, sorry, they didn't have this color, but I tried. So um, we're just going to mix all this up like this, and I'm sure that you're completely enthralled with watching every moment of this part. So. I'll catch up with you here in a minute. All right, so I followed directions, put it on low for um, 30 seconds and beat all that together with the two and a half cups of flour or thereabouts. Now it's telling me I need to turn it on like high for three minutes. And for you people in the oil field, that's called run through your ass speed. Ooh, there we go. Oh, now I'm figuring out why they have this thing. Man, this is going to be sloppier than when I had the hamburger and banana fight at Mel Nefstad's house after school that day. All right, let's turn this thing off and we'll lock, lock it so it don't tear my fingers off. Look, it's not doing it. I swear, I survived the Texas oil fields and I'm going to get killed by a string winder mixer or something or other. So, we'll unhook this, like so, and there's the object of our affection. Now you see, I put flour on here, on this wifey thing, and then I rubbed it, and I patted it, and I marked it with an MH for metric hater and me. Now I'm going to knead it for about six minutes or something. Anyway, you just, you're not going to think this is too good. But anyway... See in about 5 minutes and 13 seconds. Alright, it's sometime later and I've been kneading this dough. 
And sometimes, you know, I think, did you ever, like, you can't remember if you turned the toaster off and you left the house or something? And um, I was thinking, maybe I put too much salt or not enough in there, but um, no, perfect. Anyway, now we need to let this raise once. You'll actually let it raise twice, once the morning of before we get in the car and chain it to the exhaust manifold. But um, we're going to put this and let it raise for about 45 minutes. And in California, of course, we have to use avocado oil, avocado oil. Now, everywhere else you can use lard. You know why? Because lard comes from pigs and pigs are on the do-rag label. You see that right there? That is a testimony to the effectiveness of lard as an element of nature. Oh yeah, by the way, yeah, still has the do-rag patch in it. Do not covet my do-rag Levi patch. All right, there it is. It's in the greased bowl. And now we need to cover it up and put it in a warm place. And of course, when I cover it, I'm going to use, look at that, a do-rag right there, buddy. All right, there we go. We're bringing it back from the near the fireplace and look how big this has gotten so I'm going to separate this out like this and get ready to wrap my engine bread up into Reynolds wrap into just the right size which will involve Reynolds wrap all right, we've carefully calculated the area in the engine cooking department, compartment, excuse me. Now I'm going to put a little bit of oil right here because we're going to get this ready to put in the freezer. The morning of the adventure, we'll take this out of the freezer and the bread will rise a little bit. We're going to stack them in there just like that. And we will fold this up like so to be ergonomically correct with our engine oven there we go unless you want to spend some camera time in the freezer I will see you on the day of the trip all right it's the big day it's engine bread bake day so uh, we're letting it rise just before we put it in the motor oven. And uh, for those of you that aren't as, let's say, expertise, is that the right word? Expert as myself, you might want to check out this book called Manifold Destiny. How to cook on your car engine. And uh, got a picture of a grill there, I guess. But anyway... Uh, this is raising and it's about ready to go on. So let's go turn on the oven. Hey, the nice thing about cooking on your motor is you don't have to check the weather because you're out in it. And uh, hey, look, it snowed. All right, let's get to the control panel. Here we go. I think you've seen this before. Y'all probably pretty familiar. I got one of these fancy jobbers where you don't need the keys. I just put my foot on the right pedal and there we go. Um, we're going to turn the oven on high. We're going to synchronize it so it's on high and we're going to get the fan going because we don't want any smoke or anything. So. There we go, we'll let the oven warm up now. All right, let's open up the oven. All right, there we go. Look at that. We're just gonna put our engine bread right there. It's gonna be nice and cozy. I can tell it's gonna be warm here because it's got all this Reynolds wrap strap around us here. So we're just gonna put that right there. In our nice fancy oven now you want to make sure when you close it just like a regular oven you don't want to slam the hood because 
your bread will fall that way and you don't want that. So uh, we're going to turn it on for about a 145 miles is what we're going to do. That's the recommended baking mileage for engine bread. Weather's been a little crazy. Let's pop this up. Ooh, toasty. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes. Needs a little bit more. Oh, let me turn up the heater a little bit. Oh, can you smell that? Of course you can. <laughs> You're watching me on YouTube. I can. I guarantee you it is time right now to pull over and check the engine bread. Let me pull over here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. I got me a tree stick here. Ooh, it comes out clean, perfect. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. To make sure I don't get my fingers cut off in the fan or anything. Oh yeah. Tell you what, great. Oh yeah, look at that. Ooh, pretty. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh, it's burning my hands, but it's awesome. Listen, I'll tell you what. I got a piece of ham here. Look at that. And I got a piece of the only kind of cheese that's really cheese. Wisconsin Colby cheese is yellow usually and then this other stuff Prove lawn cheese I guess it's usually round I'm gonna put a piece of that on there and I'm gonna put some of the sweet mustard on here the beauty of this is I don't have to set a table I don't have to do dishes I can just yeah this is the perfect kitchen I, I guess dining nook but anyway let me put some of that on there there we go look at that I don't know what that is who cares dude awesome you know what you know some people put like rosemary and stuff like that in their food I'll tell you the TDI diesel gives us a flavor that's like nothing else I'm thinking I could probably put a sign on my car and if I park the right way and roll down my window and the other people would like drive up right here I could probably pull my mirror in they could drive right up and I could be doing a drive through with this stuff engine brand gonna make me rich I don't expect it'll make me rich like do rag but yeah mmm do not covet my engine bread see you next time <laughs>